All right, guys, getting the engine ready to go to our friends, uh, Jim's Automotive Machine Shop in Gill, Colorado. You guys can uh, look them up online too. It's Jamsy Online, J-A-M-S-I, Jamsy Online. So we, we're doing a little collaboration here. They're gonna be doing my engine for me. Um, I know this will be the first time you guys on YouTube have seen this, so yeah, there's the Celica working on that too. But I got the engine all all packed up, ready to go. Just doing a couple couple of final things. I gotta put this side on and uh, they are gonna run it. I have the carburetor for them, the starters in there, flywheels on there. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna do it on a dyno or just on a stand, but they're gonna break it in at least. We're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff to this engine. I'm not even sure what yet. Pretty sure it's gonna be a, a roller setup though on the cam. You guys that have been following me on Facebook know that I wiped a cam lobe and and a lifter. Oh, got the lifter out. It certainly is a collapsed lifter. Because <laughs> there's a hole in the bottom of it. Um, anyway, uh, but to run this on a stand for them, I needed to take my ignition system and send it to them and I was limited on what I can do. So check this out. So I was in the process of taking all this off, my ballast resistor that's over there, my ignition module that's right here. Uh, and then I would have had to take the main bulk connector, this part of the wiring harness. And um, it wouldn't have been a big deal to use that, but I really didn't want to. So what I did is I had my friend, Joe White from Joe's Distributor Restoration. There's his number there too. Um, I had him send me another module. I wanted another one anyway. He's, these are known for failure, although it does have the updated transistor as part of it. And I put that sticker there. That probably isn't going to last there with the heat from this thing, but I wanted to give Joe a plug. But it has the updated transistor. I wanted to have an extra one anyway, and I had him send me another ballast as well. And uh, then I just kind of wired this up in a way that um, my friends at Jamsy are going to be able to hook it up. Now, they probably would have had a coil sitting around they could have used and used a conventional, you know, four pin GM design or whatever. But they're just as uncommon today as this one. And this coil cannot run with 12 volts all the time. It'll burn it up. It has to have the step down voltage to it. So I'm sending this out to them. I'll show you guys what I did, how I wired this, and then we can actually make that coil fire. But I wanna talk about one more piece first, and this is for my tin grill buddies. So I did not realize that all this time, I had been running a four pin ignition module. This dual ballast is set up for a five pin design. That green wire at the bottom of that ballast, that is the low voltage input to the ICM and you can see it on that connector that's unplugged, it's that green, same green wire, it's next to the brown on the bottom of that five pin connector. That guy right there, that connector right there. Um, so that's your low voltage feed into the ICM. The ICM also has a 12 volt feed, but they use that low voltage feed for whatever and that's why you have a dual ballast, okay? Um, the four pin design, which I have, that green pin doesn't go anywhere. It's just been sitting there. And so after talking with Joe, what I found out is the four pin modules have the internal resistor that drops the voltage on that leg of the circuit tied internally to the 12 volt feed. It's just not used externally. So you guys that have this dual ballast and have this set up with the five pin, you don't need it. If you get a four pin design, you only have to use one side of your ballast or just a single ballast works perfectly fine. Okay, um, so let's go to my wiring setup now. So I have this wired for them. We're gonna send all this in a box so they can run it. And I have this one labeled not used on the four pin. That's that fifth wire I was just telling you guys about. Totally not used. Well, this is a four pin module. Uh, then all we need is two wires are going to be for your pickup coil. That's those two guys right there. That goes to the distributor. And then the other two wires would be a 12-volt feed that comes right, right to the battery. So that would be, let's see, my blue wire right here. I have labeled as ICM 
battery positive and I have that tied into the battery positive to the ballast that goes directly up to the battery. And then this would be coil positive right here, right? That's the low voltage dropped across the 1.9 ohm resistor. I measured them um, and that goes to coil positive. All right, I have that there. And then let me get this out of the way. We'll need that for a second. Coil negative is the other wire that goes to your ICM. So four wires to that, coil negative, battery feed, two pickup wires, that's it. Ballast resistor, 12 volt feed, drop the voltage to coil positive, right? Low voltage to keep that coil from burning up. And that's essentially it, that's all you needed. Very, very simple system. And for you guys that followed my ignition no spark diagnostic video on my truck, um, you'll know too that I have a wiring diagram for this in a PDF on my forum on my website. It's free to join my forum. You don't even have to join to find that PDF and that link. Um, it's on my website, scannerdander.com, and you can, you can go through the no start, no spark uh, diagnostic flow chart that I have on there. But I actually referenced that when I was wiring this up. It, uh, it was helpful to me. So if you guys watched that video that I did on YouTube, and I'll reference it here, you'll notice some of these voltage readings being similar. So watch, let me get this hooked up. Hear that coil fire as soon as I gave it power. So right now, essentially, my key is on, right? It's hot all the time with the key on. Coil's energized right now. What we have on coil positive, we have... 4.3 volts, coil negative, 1.2, because it is being grounded right now by that ICM. This ICM needs to have a ground. That's what that guy is right there. You take that ground away and that voltage is gonna rise. Watch, let's lose the ICM ground. It's gonna spark two on me. All right, we got full battery voltage there. That's what happens that's coil negative on this design. That'd be with your key on. You see 12 volts, 13 volts. I got a charger on it. That's a problem. There's no ground on your ICM or your ICM is faulty. Uh, there's other variables too. We're, we're not here for a, an, a complete overview. One of the systems you don't want to leave the key on for a long period of time because that coil is energized right now. It's just holding it. It's grounding it all the time. Goofy design. Goofy design. All right, but to trigger this, all you need to do is ground this external pin. And I'm just going to use my test light to do it. Test light's connected to ground. And I'm just going to touch on and off of that pin. You'll hear the coil fire. I'll get you zoomed in. Watch not worried about my test light lighting. It's not what it's doing. Camera uh, frequency is not keeping up with this spark, but you can hear it. Okay. That is going to be a working system for them. So they'll be able to take this coil, this module, the ballast and everything. I have it all labeled for them. Uh, one last piece, and this will be for my friends at Jamzy, is this is set up right now in a run mode. We only have, again, like four and a half volts going to coil positive. And when you crank an engine over, uh, you'll drop system voltage. And when system voltage drops, that'll drop that voltage even further. And that's a big problem on some of these where the cars aren't starting because their bypass circuit isn't working. But what you'd have is you'd have an extra wire coming in here. It would actually be on this side on, on the coil positive that would go directly to the starter circuit that would feed 12 volts into this instead of the four and a half volts that's here. Only when you're cranking it, only when cranking it, you'd send direct battery voltage here. So for my guys at Jamzy, if you're having issues and the spark is weak, when you connect this, all you need to do is take a jumper wire between and, and uh, between the battery positive and coil positive, between those two pins, just take a jumper and jumper those two together while you're cranking it, and as soon as it starts, take that jumper off, okay? 
Um, but that's it. I'm going to box this up. We're going to get this out to my friends at JMZ. They're in, uh, uh, if I didn't say it, they're in Gill, Colorado. They have a awesome channel. I found them on Facebook seeing some of the, the stuff that they're doing at their machine shop. And I was like, hey, man, can we can we do a collab and let me get this engine out to you and and uh they were they were on board so what's cool about that is i get to watch the process and i really trust them and what they do and especially when you have it on video you know machine shop work is a dying art and these guys are awesome they have a father and son uh duo that that work together just like me and my son caleb and i'm super excited to send this out to them so this is the last piece i'm going to box all this up i have it labeled for them and uh, you guys will see that engine over there on that stand, uh, in that crate. It'll be at their shop soon enough, being worked on. All kind of videos coming up on that. And um, yeah, I'll share, I'll, I'll continue to share that as they do it. So thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys being here with me for the ride. And I'll catch you later. So a few months back now, I had another fellow YouTuber reach out. Uh, their channel name is Scanner Danner. You may have heard of them. They reached out and said they had an engine that had experienced a cam and lifter failure and were looking for somebody to go through the engine. So I do have the lid here on their crate loose, so we can go ahead and just pop that off. And let's take a look at what's inside here. 